from San Mateo, California, it's theCUBE, covering SnapLogic Innovation Day 2018. Brought to you by SnapLogic. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the crossroads. It's 101 and 92 in San Mateo, California. A lot of popular software companies actually started here. I can always think of the Siebel sign going up and we used to talk about kind of the movement of Silicon Valley from the chips down in the South Bay and Sunnyvale and Intel really to a lot of software here in the middle of the peninsula. And we're excited to be here at SnapLogic's headquarters uh, for Innovation Day and our next guest is Craig Stewart. He's the VP of Product Management. Craig, great to see you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Welcome. So we're talking about APIs and, and we go to a lot of tech shows and the API economy is something that's talked about all the time. But really that has evolved for a couple reasons. One is the proliferation of cloud services and the proliferation of applications in the cloud services. As we all know, if you go to Google Cloud Next or Amazon reInvent, you know, the, the logo slide of apps and services available for these things is tremendous. So. Give us, give us kind of an update, if you've been involved in this space for a long time, how it's evolving, what you guys are working on here at SnapLogic. Yeah, so um, what we've seen change of late is that uh, not only is there a requirement for our customers to build APIs, but also to then allow those APIs to be consumed by their partners and networks out there. And as a part of that, they may need to have more management of those APIs than we provide. We're very good at creating APIs with inbound and outbound uh, payload uh, parameters, all of those things. You know, so we can create those data services uh, via uh, our APIs, but customers then need to uh, have a requirement now to add some functionality around, okay, what about when I have a thousand users of these and I need to be able to throttle them and those kind of things. And so what we've seen happening is there's been this space of the full lifecycle API management uh, technologies which have been available for some time and amongst those we've had um, Google Apigee kind of being the, the benchmark of those right. um, with the Apigee Edge platform. And in fact, what we've done in this latest release is we've provided en engineered integration into that Apigee Edge platform so that the, the APIs that we create, we can push those directly into the Apigee Edge platform for them to do the advanced authentication, the monetization, the developer platform around it, the developer portal, all of those kind of things. In addition to that, we've also added the functionality to generate the open API specification, Swagger as it's known, and to be able to take that Swagger definition, to having generated it, we can then actually drop it into the API gateways provided by all of the different cloud vendors. So whether it's Amazon with their API gateway or at the Azure gateway, all you need to do is then take that generated Swagger definition, and this literally is a right mouse button, open API, and it generates the file for you. From there, just drop that into those platforms, and now they can be actually managed in those services directly. So I, I want to unpack kind of API lifecycle management, because just for kind of a 101 for people that aren't familiar, we think of APIs and we know applications are making calls and it's, I'm sending data from this app to that app and this is pulling uh, information from that app to this app. That's all pretty straightforward. But what are some of the nuances in lifecycle management of APIs that, that kind of your typical person really hasn't thought through that, 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 that are A, super important and you know, only increasing in relevance as more and more of these systems are all tied together. So the, the, the use of those APIs, that some of the things around them that, that those platforms provide is some advanced authentication. So they may be using, wanting to use OAuth with two-factor authentication, those kind of things. They may want to do some protocol translation. So many customers may know how to consume a SOAP service, generally legacy 
uh, these days. It's but so funny that soap is now legacy. It just cracks me up. I remember it was like the hottest thing since sliced oh, bread. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I still I still have the uh, the micro the, the the Microsoft Internet Explorer four uh, uh, T-shirt. Windows ninety five box too. I'm sure. Oh, but that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, you know the 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 management of those APIs, adding that functionality to do advanced authentication to do uh, throttling. If you have a, an API, you don't want all of your backend systems to suddenly be uh, overwhelmed. Right, right. And one of the things that those full lifecycle uh, platforms can do is throttle so that you can say, okay, this user may have only 10 requests a minute or something like that. Right, right. Uh, so that stops the back end system being overwhelmed in the event of a, uh, a, a spike in, in usage. And uh, that helps with you know, denial of service attacks and right, those kind of right. things where you're protecting the core systems. Other things that they can do is the monetization. It's like if you want to actually expose an API for partners to consume, but you want to charge them on that basis, you want to have a way of actually tracking those things to then be able to you know, monetize that right. and to, to provide the analytics and the billing on top of it. Um, so there's a number of those different aspects that the full life cycle provides on top of what we provide, which is the core API that we're actually creating. Right, and is it even feasible to plug an API into a cloud-based service if your service isn't also cloud-based? Because as, as you're speaking and talking about spikes, um, clearly that's one of the huge benefits of, of cloud is that you have the ability to spike, whether it's planned or unplanned, um, to, to massive scale, depending mm -hmm. on what you're trying to do, and to turn that back down. I would imagine if your API is going through that platform and you're connecting to another application and uh, it's Pepsi running a promotion on Super Bowl Sunday, hopefully your application is running in a very similar type of infrastructure. Absolutely, so, <laughs> but you, know, that you, you do have to plan for that, uh, that elastic scalability. And right. that's one of the things with the SnapLogic platform is it has been built to be able to scale in that way. Right, now a lot of conversation too around iPaaS and, and integration platforms mm -hmm. as a service. How do you see that kind of mapping back to you know, more of a, of a straightforward API integration? So, what we're talking about in terms of API integration here uh, and the, the things that we've just recently added, this is the consumption of our APIs. The iPaaS platform that we actually provide consumes APIs, all sorts of different APIs, whether they're SOAP or REST uh, you know, and, and different native APIs of different applications. Um, and you know, that, that we do out of the box. That is what we are doing, is API integration. Right. The new functionality that we've introduced is this added capability to then manage those APIs from external systems. And that's particularly where those external systems go beyond the boundaries of a company's own domain. It's when they need to expose those APIs to their partners, to other third parties that are going to want to consume those APIs. And you know, that's, that's where you need those additional layers of protection. Most customers actually use those APIs internally within their organization, and they don't need that extra level of management. Right, right. But I would imagine it's in increasingly um, important and increasingly common and increasingly prolific that the API integration and the API leverage is, is, is less and less inside the building and much, much more outside the building. It is certainly going a lot more outside the building and because customers are recognizing that, that data is an asset. Right, right. And then having it via a cloud broker, if you will, just adds a nice integration point that's standardized, has scale, has reliability, exactly. versus having all these point-to-point -point solutions. Yeah, absolutely. So as you, as, all right. I was going to say, so as you look forward, uh, I can't believe we're like May 16th of 2018 already. Um, 
year's halfway over. Well, what, well, what are you looking forward to next? What's what's kind of on the roadmap as, as this kind of API economy continues to evolve, which is then going to increase the demands on those APIs, the integration of those APIs, the management, as you said, the life cycle of the way all this stuff works together. What's kind of on the roadmap? If we talk a year from now, what are we going to be talking about? There's um, a, a lot of uh, uh, settling down of, of what we've delivered that's going to take place. And on top of that, then the, the capabilities that we can add to add some additional uh, uh, capabilities that the, the customers want to use, even internally. Because in, even internally, where they're not using a cloud service, you know, they have requirements to identify you know, who in an organization is utilizing those things. So additional uh, capabilities um, without having to go beyond the boundaries of the customer's own domain. Um, and so that's going to be some things like authentication. It's going to be some additional uh, uh, metrics on what's actually being used in those um, the APIs, the metrics on the APIs themselves in terms of you know, how are they performing, how frequently are they being called, and in addition to that, you know, what's the response time on those things? Right, so right. there's additional intelligence that we're going to be providing over and above the creation of the APIs right. that we're looking to do for those customers, particularly inside the organization. And, the, and there's, it's very similar requirements, but just different, right? Because organizations take a company like Boeing or something, it's actually not just one company. There's many, many yeah. organizations. You have all kind of, no, now with GDPR coming out, kind of data privacy and management restrictions, so even if it's inside your four walls, all those measures, all those controls are still very, mm -hmm. very relevant. Very much so. So providing those, uh, uh, some additional capabilities around that is, uh, is pretty important for all us. Right. Well, Craig, you're sitting right on top of the API economy, so uh, I think you'll keep busy for a little while. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> all right, well thanks for taking a few minutes to stop by. Thank you. All right, he's Craig Stewart, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from SnapLogic in San Mateo, California. Thanks for watching.